Thank you, everybody, and welcome to CWS Presents in the Northeast Kingdom. Today, I'm honored to have um, the new president, I believe, of J Peak Ski Resort. Um, Steve Wright is here today to talk to us about the changes at J Peak when it comes to working with employees. As we know, it's one of the biggest um, employers, if not the biggest employer, um, even though part of these jobs are seasonal, to be around. And we want to hear what's changing at the mountain. Also to my right, I have Hib Doe, who is the Vocational Rehab D District Manager for St. Johnsbury and for Newport. Welcome. So we're gonna get started right with you, Steve, and I'll give Hib the first question. Sure. Um, Steve, we were talking before we kind of went on air that uh, this year up at Jay, you had the most successful year you've kind of ever had up there. Mm -hmm. And I know that you know, you're kind of looking at, you know, bringing on new staff in this new year, and you're you're wanting to have the best people you possibly can have up at the mountain, people that are going to do a great job and serve your patrons well. And we've heard that you're looking to do new things there, and so we were interested to hear about maybe what that was about for you. Sure, yeah, I mean, we had, uh, from a revenue perspective, we had the most successful season, you know, we've ever seen last year, which, um, you know, we like to take all the credit for it, but the reality is we also had uh, 400 and 30, 440 inches of snow, which <laughs> makes everybody look brilliant. Um, um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, we're, we're looking to, you know, this year we're focusing on, on two pieces as it relates to employment. It's obviously the attraction of, of good qualified employees, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, equally important, or, or you could create the argument that it's even more important, the retention of yeah. great ones that we already yeah. have. So um, there's a bunch of different pieces that go into that, but everything really starts, um, with wages you know mm -hmm. we've been in a position um, because of you know some of the issues surrounding the EB5 um, the EB5 case that's ongoing mm -hmm. uh, that looking backwards the last four or five six years we've been in a wage freeze where um, the existing employees hadn't seen any increase in salary right. um, and starting wages hadn't been impacted so it made it very difficult for us to compete uh, with some of the other businesses in mm -hmm. and around the region that uh, had been creating uh, better salary and benefit packages to attract better uh, better employees. So, mm -hmm. uh, part of what um, I, I've been focusing on personally with the receiver, who um, at a federal level sort of keeps one eye on the on the performance of the resort, um, is creating that that salary and benefit package to to impact us. Mm -hmm. Great, um, great, great. I mean, do you have some specific things maybe that you're that you're doing, or some thoughts that you have? Yeah, I mean, sp you know, if we talk specific numbers, we put a half a million dollars to almost seven hundred fifty thousand dollars straight to um, straight to wage modifications for for entry level uh, yeah. entry level positions across all the all of our categories. Um, we have. Um, retention sign on and comeback bonuses that we've never had That's even great. a concept of that before yeah, yeah. Um, that we're putting into place uh, we have a, a, a star program mm -hmm. with housekeeping where as uh, as you um, as we present the job to you you can see you can see not only what your starting wage is at but how that wage will move forward uh, predicated on certain levels that you hit within your job performance so that there is no mystery about where you start and there's right. even less of a mystery of where you might end up should you perform in your mm -hmm. job the way that we expect well, that's to. Great. Great. Um, you know, the, but the, you know, the, it's, it goes beyond just straight wages, although, mm -hmm. like I said, it is important. Yeah. Um, you know, the culture of what we're doing up there needs to, at some level to be rebuilt um, because of what's happened up there. Mm -hmm. so, so socially there are programs that, you know, we've put in, in place where um, you know, we, we have weekly uh, physical boot camp sessions that we're starting and yoga sessions every week. We've got uh, a partnership that we put together with Berry Creek down the road where um, all of our employees have a healthy food stipend. Um, once a month they can go down, they get uh, 20 to $30 in credit down there. They can go down and get you know, fresh locally grown produce, oh, great. Um, yeah. dairy products and those mm -hmm. sorts of things. And we have, uh, for the first time, a committee that we uh, we call the Joy Division, um, where it's a, a group of disparate managers across different departments where we literally sit down and try to figure out ways to expand those benefit packages. How do we put things in front of our employees that, again, uh, retain them, mm -hmm. um, but programs that also attract people to come there in the first yeah. place? And, and with an emphasis on how do, we, how do we get the local community involved with 
creating those programs because right. we look for opportunities to not only benefit the employee, um, but as we create that benefit for the employee, how do we integrate the community to deliver it to try to help them as well? Right. So, right. And, then, and then there's housing. I mean, obviously, it's the, yeah. uh, within the ski industry, it's a huge piece right now that um, you know, companies are looking for better employees, but the regions that these companies are in uh, don't have a hell of a lot of affordable housing. Right, um, right. So, yeah, and obviously we have built up quite a bit of, of retail beds that we rent yeah. up there. So I went to the receiver as we started this construction process or restarted the process and said, can we take one of these buildings that we have to build because of the EB-5 program and turn it into employee housing? Um, because we have enough beds, right. quite frankly, to succeed right. financially. But we have no place to put these employees. Right. Um, so he he let us do that. So now we have, you know, not only are we putting uh, right around three hundred thousand dollars into refurbishing the Ingle Nook, um, so we can put some more folks down there. But we have an entire building on campus that's dedicated just to employees. It's almost ski in, ski out housing. You can walk to work from there. Um, it has a fireplace and flat screen TVs, and all the utilities are going to be covered. Um, for about uh, 350 to 400 bucks a month. Wow. So, um, great. Yeah, Sounds we're excited great. about that. We're probably more excited about that than uh, anything that we've done here in the last year, <laughs> year and a half. It's, uh, it's nice to be able to do that. And uh -huh. I give a lot of credit to the receiver who, mm -hmm. um, it was a difficult decision for him to say, yeah, this, this asset that we originally uh, had forecasted would drive revenue for the resort is going to be turned over. Uh, to, to support employees, but you know we created the argument that without the employees, right. there is no hope. Right, right. What are you going to do? <laughs> no, that's great. And people yeah. know. I mean, uh, people who live here or on the other side of the mountain over Richford and Montgomery Way, that just you know, depending on what your job is, if you're getting you know, if you're getting like kind of an entry level pay, that if you can do that here, mm -hmm. you know, the drive to the mountain is kind of daunting to think about that. Yep. So. I think what you're looking to do around pay, and also, I mean, for folks that can live up there, I think that's a great option for them. Yeah. Um, and even I mean, it, the other yeah. the other piece of this thing really is, you know, we can talk about wages and all, all these all yeah. these packages uh, that attract and retain the employees, and I think it's great. Obviously, it's something that I feel strong about, but we we have to we have to provide a uh, a path and a formula for these employees to go from. Uh, entry-level housekeeping positions and entry-level food and beverage positions and entry-level ski related positions provide them a path to turn that into a career and mm -hmm. that's that's really right. what we need to do we yeah. need to we need to welcome people into the mm -hmm. into the family onto the yep. team and then identify the ones who are really over delivering and make sure that there is no reason that they ever leave I mean right. that, I right. can't I can't underline that strongly enough you know so we have some leadership paths for well, yeah or have yeah. a path for them to get yeah to get past that, that yeah. entry level piece. Yeah. You know, we have so many people up there that are in mid level and upper level management positions that started off as at an entry level position mm -hmm. and I think we we lost focus of how important that is to the organization to mm -hmm. make sure that everybody is vigilant about being on the lookout for those type of employees that we just can't afford to lose. Right. Right. That's great. I think one of the biggest things that we have found and we spoke about when, when you guys called us about a month ago, I think it was now, um, is a lot of times people go to work at Jay Peak and they may take the first job. You know, they may say, yeah, we here, you know, we want to do housekeeping, mm -hmm. but then they go to housekeeping and it doesn't work and they never, they never look back to go back to the mountain. Yeah. So one thing I want to say that since we've been, been speaking and working with Ellen, um, which is your, one of your training people from HR, is we want to look at bringing people up here to look at all the positions first and to hear about it f firsthand from the managers that this is what they offer. So you may come up and say, you want to work in housekeeping, but then look at it and say, boy, this is not my position. I really don't want to do this. Yeah. But before you walk off the mountain and never look back, we're going to give you a chance to talk to some of the managers and say, ah, okay, maybe this is what I want to do. So it saves the people from completely closing out the mountain and really hearing about it. I want to say thank you to JP because what we're going to do is we're going to start bringing some people up, some folks that we work with, some folks that CCV works with, um, and bring them up and have them look around talking to the managers they're going to do lunch on the mountain and we're going to we're going to see really what's going on so that maybe we can retain the people rather than having them walk away and never looking back because as we know like i said you know jay peak is a, a large size employer um, when they called us up it was like let's let's work and let's get some people up here and who are going to be happy and i think that that's what everybody's looking for 
So I again, I can't say enough for the way that this is working out. I know that we're keeping in contact. CWS has been working with JP for while well, going on six plus years with myself. Um, and it was, even though there's been a few bumps in the road, the different things that have happened with JP, the job carving that you have done for some of our people that are consumers that we work with has been fantastic. And you know, job, we do a lot of work experiences where somebody comes up, says, let us try it for a few days, see what we think about this position. Well, number one, we're putting the person to work, um, but they're getting to see, but also we're giving them the chance to make a decision of saying, this doesn't work for mm -hmm. me, but maybe this position will. Yeah. And everybody from Allison, at your, you know, with HR to Ellen, everybody's been working really closely with us. And for that, I want to say thank you to yeah. Jay Peak for sure. No, it's important that, you know, we've had some false starts before, m mostly uh, completely uh, relating to the EB-5 program about s things that we, we can do right. uh, in the past or things that we could do in the past, and we really didn't get to where we needed to. Um, and those excuses are gone now. And every member of my staff understands that it is the single most important thing um, that any of us will focus on this year is the attraction and retention of, of team members. And they're getting tired of me saying it. But mm -hmm. There's a staff meeting at 1130, which I'm going to go to today, which is why we have to leave here at 11, <laughs> that I'm going to continue to sing that, yeah. that same song. Because if, if we're not on, if, if every single person on, the, on our team is not on that particular page, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. right. And we have to be. So Thank great. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was great. I, I don't know if we wanted to ask, I mean, uh, folks from the audience we've got a lot yeah of that's one thing we have not mentioned yet we do have a full house here and i think this is probably one of the first for any ktv um, we do have an audience we also have in in the audience we have folks from the legislature we do have um, representative mike marcott we have senator bobby Starr here we have um, mike keel from ccv and we have people from we have different business account managers which is my position in different areas of the state um, we have some employment specialists here, um, youth specialists, people from mental health. And if I'm forgetting anybody, please, I apologize. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to open it up. We have a mic to my right-hand side. If you have a question, please come up to the mic, ask the question. And uh, then when you're done, if you could just sign your name and what organization you're from, that would be great. So does anybody have any questions? Well, I hope somebody has some questions. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Katie. yeah, Katie's got the first question here. Well, thank you for being here today, and I appreciate that. I know I talk about a lot um, with employee retention, and I come from a hospitality background where I spent 10 years, and I think one of the biggest things is feeling underpaid, underpaid underappreciated, um, and overworked. Yep. And I just kind of want to see from you, are you talking to department managers about how they can change that and show appreciation that day, not with money, not with mm -hmm. any sort of objects, but hey, you're doing a really great job so that people yeah. understand I am doing good, this is going well, because I think that is missing a lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a good question. I mean, part, part of uh, the overworked part of that question results in, uh, is, is a result of being understaffed. Mm -hmm. So when, when we have a housekeeping team that should have 140 housekeepers, that we're only able to get to 80. Um, everybody else pitches in to pick up the slack. When that happens, a 40-hour work week turns into a 55 or 58-hour yeah. work week. And over a period of time, especially within housekeeping, especially within condo housekeeping at Jay Peak, which is outside in the elements all the time, it, it fatigues you mentally, it fatigues you physically. Um, and then the, and the managers end up being fatigued. And maybe they forget to say, good job. Mm -hmm. um, so so we need to operate from a... From a um, a platform of of um, correct staffing. Once we, once we do that, we get people down to a normal workload. Then we integrate the programs that we, that we have in place right now. We have something called the Raise J Daily, <laughs> which every single one of our managers now have uh, little coins. They look like little golf markers, where when they see somebody in the act of of good service or good team and uh, uh, supporting a teammate. Um, uh, they give them a coin. The coin is turned into human resources for a $20 move-up card to, for them to buy lunch or buy anything on the campus that they can with that with that coin. So that's in place to hit somebody right in the moment, to reinforce that act of teammanship or uh, or doing their job well, whatever whatever the whatever the person is mm -hmm. identified. Um, and then we have on top of that, which again we're going to be doing today, is the Employee of the Month program. Um, that is peer nominated. You know, it's crazy that a business like JP for 50 years hasn't had an employee of the month recognition mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. um, 
part of that is on myself because I've been there for 15 years and I didn't create the program, so it's nobody else's fault but myself. <laughs> but regardless, um, that's in place uh, for peers to nominate uh, co-workers, people from other departments, um, so that um, they're able to be put up in front of, of uh, other peers to let them know what a, what a great job they've done mm -hmm. over the course of the preceding month. Now, those people get uh, a $200 gift certificate, a two-night stay, tickets to a concert, and dinner. So that they get to, and I think it's important that the employees get to enjoy the asset that they're supporting. Mm -hmm. That they have a way because in the mm -hmm. past they've you know our employees never got to stay in the Trail right. Lodge, right. never got to use uh, um, uh, the Hotel J. Right. Um, they got to go into uh, the water park, you know, some for half an hour on some Tuesday in January. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. You know, we want right. them to enjoy the amenities that they're trying to promote. So mm -hmm. that's part of the, the monthly program. And then there's an annual program that we now call the Ring of Fire, which is we pick 15 employees who are technically the uh, considered the employees of the year, also peer nominated, and there's a whole other um, uh, source of rewards for for that. But um, yeah, it's it's to answer your question sh in, a, in a shorter fashion. It's <laughs> making sure that we're staffed and making sure that that we have programs in place mm -hmm. that reward and motivate folks through the season, and then mm -hmm. making sure that the managers are constantly using that and constantly on the lookout for that type of performance. Yeah. No, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Katie. Good You're question. Welcome. Anybody else with questions? Sure. Ah, Mike Keogh from CCV. Hello. Um, Hi, Mike. I'm happy to hear about um, you taking over. I'm, 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 I'm really a big fan of what you're talking about here, your vision for where g Peak's going. It's exactly what I would have done. Uh, but no, in, serious, in all seriousness, um, <laughs> I really like the idea of exploring career pathways, looking at all the potential that Jay can provide a potential employee. My question is, how do you sort of facilitate that? How do you help employees um, explore various career pathways within, within JP? I think it, it starts um, at, a, at an educational level. I'm on the, the board of the Career Center um, as well. So we, you know, we've had conversations there about trying to create programs where um, we bring employees or bring students up uh, to the mountains so that they can explore different departments and see what opportunities are there. But it's also making sure that the managers who are here at the mountain have uh, in, in, in their toolbox um, the ability to uh, show their, the people that work for them how they can navigate and move through that particular department, but also uh, departments outside of where they're working. I mean, we've, in the past week, we've taken some really good water park employees Right, some lifeguards uh, who probably never thought about a career in hospitality. They started out because they needed to, to make mm -hmm. some money in uh, any way that they could. Yeah. And we've identified that they're fantastic em employees. We wanted them to stay on the team. They've since moved into supervisors within housekeeping. Um, that They've moved from you know, an $11.35 an hour uh, uh, job to something that's full-time year-round benefited because those managers are on the lookout for those types of employees. So I think it's, it's making sure that, that all of our managers are tuned up correctly, that they're looking for that. Um, and once they identify who those employees are, to really work with them individually on what is it, what is it that you've seen here mm -hmm. that interests you? Is it something within the department? Or is there, have you seen something? If you wanna, you wanna run a hotel, do you wanna manage the ice rink? Do you wanna do something in food and beverage? Um, it's, it's making sure that you know, I can't stress uh, highly enough that it, the responsibility falls back on our managers um, to make sure that we don't lose those people. I mean, we're, we're at a point now where anytime anybody leaves the employment at JP, um, the, uh, the exit interview essentially ends up on my desk because I want to be the last person uh, that sees why this person mm -hmm. is leaving. We had, a, we had a situation the other day, we had a housekeeper um, who um, wanted to leave because she was overworked. She was working too many hours um, and had an exit interview with Allison. It came to my, uh, came on, uh, to my desk. I know this, this woman is a fantastic worker. Um, so it hit my desk. I talked to Allison. She explained what the issue was. We brought her in for a meeting with me. We moved her to a different apartment and we saved her. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, that person would have been gone and working at Olympia Sports or working right. someplace else where they have uh, an ability to make money, not drive all the way up to the mountain yeah. through crappy weather conditions and yeah. make probably a better wage. So there has to be accountability from myself all the way down. That's to answer your question That's in great. terms of that. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Thanks, Mike. Great. Good. Thank you. 
Any other questions? Hey, Kathy. Hi, Steve. Hi, Kathy. Hey, he's been very innovative the last couple of years in your new programs and whatever, and including transportation. Can you tell us what the transportation assistance will look like this year? We're um, still in the middle of, of developing and expanding that. Um, we bought six new shuttles this year at the mound that we have on campus. We, we will by October. Um, our plan is to, to drive those things wherever the employees are. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to expand it on the other side of the mountain to get uh, to get uh, further out because um, we've we've recognized the fact that you know we without that piece we don't get to the numbers that we need to get mm -hmm. to. So so to answer your question, it's definitely in flux, but we're we're expanding, not contracting. That we have to. Mm -hmm. That's great. I think that's you know really important to people who are considering mm -hmm. employment at the mountain yeah. is knowing that you know they're going to be appreciated when they get there. They have the means to get there, and they have the means to um, to move up. Mm -hmm. and I mean, there are there a are, reason to stay. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it, in the state of Vermont, um, you know, car inspection standards have right. gotten more exactly. difficult. So we're expecting that. Uh, to impact our ability to get people mm -hmm. to drive in on their own. Um, we also have some carpool programs mm -hmm. that we're, we're going to expand into where employees that um, drive other employees are available for not only salary increases but uh, credits at the mountain with respect to retail and food and beverage. So we're trying to incentivize That's some great. employees to partner yeah. together because not only does it obviously it saves yeah. on gas, saves the environment, but it actually builds camaraderie within yeah. within right. uh, departments and outside of departments when these right. these people are spending lots right. of time together. So, right. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that'll be a really crucial piece. Yeah, um, if people know, you know, appreciation, we want to get you there, we want to keep you there, we want you to grow with us. So yeah. thanks a lot. You're welcome. Thank you. And as you guys are thinking of some more questions, I want to just expand on that just a little bit with transportation. I know that last year and the year before when we were working on hiring fairs, specifically for JP, that was one thing yeah. that we were looking at, our numbers. So I know we had, last year we did like one hiring fair at each, at each place, whether it be Richford, whether it be Newport, Island Pond. This year we want to do two mm -hmm. um, to set up, you know, to have two different times um, at each place mm -hmm. so that we can expand on the numbers we get so I can work with the business account managers and the ECs around to make sure we get the numbers built up so when we do have it, so when it does take a van coming in, that we do have the van with mm -hmm. people on it. Yeah, I mean, and that's another topic too, is that the whole notion of job fairs, we're trying to sort of reimagine what those things yeah. are because they, they were, you know, roughly the least fun place in the world to be at uh, in the past, at least the ones that, <laughs> the ones that, that we've put on. Um, so we're, tr we're trying to, um, this year, um, we don't have the, we have the, I'm not sure we have the date down yet, but the first one of ours is gonna be in the sale room at the east side, where we're gonna have a band in there, yeah. we're gonna have food, and you know we'll have uh, some managers there talking with employees, but um, it, it's a, I think it's an opportunity for us to put our culture on display a little bit uh, as well. Right. So it's not some sanitized right. room. Here's an application. Like, exactly. Right. Yeah, this is what you're gonna do. Yeah. yeah. So, so <laughs> yeah. we want to show that there's a, a big part of being part of the JP team is being part of and contributing to the culture. Yeah. So you know the job fairs, whatever the hell we're gonna end up calling them this yeah. year, are gonna have yeah. music and food and we're going to have all of our managers there having conversations with potential employees in a way that we haven't before. It's not going to be me and you across the desk. It's going right. to be us sitting together and having a conversation about some of the options at the at the mountain. So great. That's a, yeah, that sounds that's, great. That that's sounds definitely great. a real big change but a real positive change. Well, I'm hoping that people come because but the worst thing you can do is is throw a party and nobody shows up. So <laughs> I, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna market the hell out of it. So there'll be a lot of, and that's another thing that we haven't done in the past. You know, we in the past we've put, you know, an ad in the paper saying JP Job Fair, come work at JP, and it doesn't excite anybody. And my my background is in, is in marketing. So we've put, you know, we've got about fifty or eighty thousand dollars put into de to developing a creative campaign around employment. Um, and then using that to buy media to make sure we're getting the word out, whether it's uh, across social sites, um, you know, some digital campaigns, obviously mm -hmm. some radio and local newspapers, but yeah. the, uh, the aesthetic of what that campaign is going to look like is going to be something, uh, something that folks haven't seen before. It's going to mm -hmm. be different. It's going to be in a language and in a voice that you would expect from Jay Peak, um, but it's going uh, to be different than, than our traditional hiring uh, campaigns of the yeah. past. Great, great. We'll look forward to that. I, I think looking at it, even at the people out here in the audience, um, you know, the CWS team and with other community members, 
you know, what a thing to hear and what a thing for us to go back to our consumers that we're working with to say this is what's being offered, these are the changes, and to work together with JP to, to see this stuff come to, to be. Yeah, and you know, we're, we're not so, um, we're not necessarily convinced that it's going to work uh, to the extent that we want it to in the first year. It's gonna, yeah. I think this is going to be a process. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we, JP has built up a reputation, whatever, for whatever your, your definition of what it is to, to work at JP or to, to view JP, it's it's taken years to get us to this point. I think it's going to take years to, in some cases, undo some of that narrative mm -hmm. and create a new one. Uh, so our expectations aren't uh, don't include a 100% victory here in year one, but we can't fail at this. Right. We can't. So right. so our our perspective is going to be over a couple of years to look back on it and see, uh, it, you know, gradual but consistent improvement in our ability to hire over, over a period of time. Well, I mean, I think that the word travels, you know, that's yeah. one of the things about, you know, our small communities. In both you know, directions. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. it's, but I think that, I, I think that, you know, if, if you're implementing these things and you're really making a serious attempt at this, people are going to hear about yeah. it. And, you know, people are going to be talking to each other. And, it's and we've got to live it. Make it. You know, we have to live it. You know, it's one thing yeah. for me to sit yeah. here and yeah. talk, right. talk yeah. about this. I mean, <laughs> at some level, we've, we've talked about this before. Yeah. Um, but we've got to deliver it, and the managers right. have to deliver it, and every, everybody right. at JP has to deliver on this. So, yep. Steve, one big question I'm sure that we're going to have is there's been people who have worked up there before. Mm -hmm. um, we all hear about the big blacklist. Um, blacklist. And that's I think I, might, I was on the blacklist at one point. <laughs> <laughs> so I got off of it. My question is <laughs> that we're going to get out there is, okay, so I worked with you a couple years ago, and for whatever reason I no longer work with you, put on the blacklist. Is it still a good thing now for me to go and reapply well, and it's see the, what happens? Well, it's the for whatever reason part <laughs> that, that, that interests there me. You know. Um, you know, there are probably some cases that we wouldn't rehire people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, which is understandable. Um, there are other cases that uh, we probably would. So mm -hmm. it's something that we probably would deal with on an individual basis. But you're saying it would be a good idea to reapply if, if you know. Um, if, they th if somebody has a case, yeah. mm -hmm. we, 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 we will keep an open mind about just about anything. Yeah. Well, and that's, uh, the good thing is Let's bad. have a conversation. We've, uh, we've mm -hmm. called you guys up many times and said, listen, this person is reapplying. You guys have always been open to let us relook at, you know, look yeah. at individual cases. I mean, uh, the good thing for me is that all of that stuff is going to hit me at some level. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've, I have to dedicate uh, an index of my time to this. If, mm -hmm. if, if I expect everybody to take it seriously, I have to take it more seriously than any other part of my job. Mm -hmm. right. um, so I'm going to hear about that call. Just in the same way that I hear about somebody that's leaving the mountain for right. reason X, I'm going to hear about a call that comes in that says, we have somebody that wants to apply. Yeah. You know? right. Yeah. Right. Right. Any other questions out here? You know, go back to the audience. Uh -oh. Okay. <laughs> Senator Chastar. Yes. Uh, thank you. And it's a pleasure to be here. And I hear all the good things that uh, may be happening at uh, one of our major employers uh, in the area. And, you know, I've worked with Jay for 40 odd years <laughs> um, over many different issues and um, you know this last issue that came along uh, it's it's been very difficult uh, but what a great mountain we have and in, in the amenities that mm -hmm. that you folks have to offer um, one thing we haven't heard um, much about is how many like I can remember when you used to have 40 or 50 employees in the off season mm -hmm. yeah. and you know up there now if you drive through you can count that many just <laughs> driving by without seeing the yeah. bulk of the people uh, but the question I guess is how many people do you employ now when you're really busy and then the summer employment's great uh, and what could the state of Vermont possibly do to make things uh, better for you folks? We're we're at about um, we're at about 600 uh, full time year round who are there on on uh, like payroll for this week was about 600 people, um, and it, we get to about 1600 uh, come full time. Wow! Um, you know, <laughs> once we get once we really get mm -hmm. cooking. Um, you know, from a state perspective, one of the one of the and this is a super micro issue. One of the issues that we've really struggled with, and I'm sure that many in the audience here understand, is the the daycare provider situation, mm -hmm. where 
um, where folks have um, the expectation and, the, and uh, now is that that anyone providing that level of care have a uh, have a, a BA in childhood education, um, which for us has I don't even know how to qualify it. It's more than quintupled, uh, mm -hmm. so it's six or seven times whatever whatever you call that um, the payroll that we have to dedicate to daycare. Now, if somebody came in and looked at that department and just isolated it, they would say that I'd have to have my head examined to even run the department because mm -hmm. we lose a oh, right. ton of money in, in that world. But we have to we have to have that in place um, for guests, and we have to have it in place for employees. I mean, we don't have to, but. Um, it provides a child care <coughs> option for employees that, right. again, if we need to, right. if we want to attract these folks, yeah. they need yeah. to be able to have affordable child care. Yeah. Um, we're charging, you know, two bucks an hour for that, and and we're charging two bucks an hour um, that we see, and it costs us probably thirty or forty dollars an hour um, when you factor in everything. Um, so that, from a state level, has really yeah. has really hurt us at a, at a at a micro issue. I know what the intent of that law is. Um, I think it probably um, I think it probably in the end will end up doing more harm than good, not just at the mountain but regionally. Um, um, so anything you can do to get that undone, that would be well, wonderful. <laughs> sure, I, I, certainly I don't, I don't a challenge. Yeah, sure, it would work. <laughs> I'll set the bar too high for you. Yeah. But no, well, you've always you've always been very supportive of us. Uh, of both myself and Bill and everything up there, and, and that certainly is appreciated. Yep. So. Well, very good, and uh, good luck to you. Thanks, Senator. Thanks, and just thanks, Bobby. Any other questions? Oh, oh, Jody, go ahead. Um, I'm at Boca Rehabin, I'm a counselor, and um, we have people coming through our doors looking for employment that have a variety of different disabilities. And these people can make wonderful employees. Um, I've had some over the years work at JPEAK, and you have been helpful with that process, but I'm just wondering in general if someone needs some kind of assistive technology or accommodation on the job, how, um, how does that usually work? I, I, um, it would start originally with a with a conversation um, with the human resource department with going through the application process I think and identifying that on the application of what the disability is and what um, uh, what a particular piece of technology how that might remedy it but um, yeah I mean we would absolutely consider that we have to and again it goes back to um, we have too many open positions and not enough people Okay. Um, and we have to have an open mind towards everything, and we absolutely would, would consider whatever we had to do to get a to get a good employee on uh, on the team. Great, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you very much, Katie. I know you had another question. So I'm also with Voc Rehab, and I know that we're looking not to just find employment, but also help our consumers maintain that, which works as obviously you're trying to retain them on your end as well. Um, and one thing is, you know, certainly career growth, as we've talked, and job opportunities. When something becomes available in an open position, how do you promote that to employees so they know they can apply from within so that they're all aware of these open positions? A couple of different ways. Um, we have uh, on our website, the, uh, it's the, the first place that we go to, to update you know, the, uh, the open positions that, that we have at the resort. And employees and managers are trained to, if, if they're looking to, to make a change or are interested in what else might be available, to look there first. Um, we have um, a Facebook group that is dedicated uh, specifically to that type of messaging um, uh, that existing employees uh, are the only ones that are allowed into that group. So everybody from entry level jobs up to me, everybody is permissioned into that. We have <coughs> 300, 350 people in there right now. So we will, as soon as a job becomes available, it's posted in, in that Facebook group after we post that online. Um, our when to, we have a, um, a scheduling program called When to Work, which is um, how essentially we create staffing schedules and work schedules at the, at the resort, and uh, they're essentially uh, your schedule is sent to you electronically. And when open positions come available, they're attached to that to that work schedule. So That's you might great. not even be looking for a mm -hmm. for a new job. Um, but when you get your schedule for the week, you have an attachment that shows what new uh, positions have become available <laughs> since the last, yeah. since sure. the last, uh, your last schedule came out. So we're trying to promote that, 
Um, you know, there are there are ways for you to move and navigate up at the mountain by, by reaching out to mm-hmm. employees in that mm-hmm. way too. Um, and then, you know, we'll hit some of the traditional methods as well. We'll, mm-hmm. you know, if we have a, a, um, positions that we're having trouble filling, we might go out and use paid media or digital um, and, and advertise across social sure. and advertise across other other work sites and where folks are looking for employment mm-hmm. might be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's so, great. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Katie. Have you thought about like uh, like if another employee brings somebody on board? We have, yeah, we have, have a kind bonus of bonus program. or something uh, for yeah, that. Yeah. We've, we've, um, we've essentially um, loosened all the restrictions that we had in the past. It was, you know, you could make a $50 move up card and you couldn't bring more than one person in in a year and I don't know why the hell we <laughs> so now it's you know give us yeah oh got. yeah right we'll back yeah. up the truck for that, you, you can give us employees I mean, right. we have a guy we have a guy that uh, that's uh, brought us five or six employees yeah um uh, in the last year, the guy hasn't paid for lunch in two years. Yeah. Jake, I think, so. <laughs> well, they're uh, going to be your best advocate, right? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. you know, they're, yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah, yeah 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Any more questions out from the audience? Todd Gratton from St. Johnsbury area. Good morning. Hi, Todd. I want to thank you for uh, coming out here and answering all these questions, sir. It's actually very informative. So I do Neil's position down in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Um, I work with a lot of the local businesses down there, and I'm really happy to hear what I'm hearing today about one of the biggest employers in the region um, reaching out and kind of trying to change the culture, not just mm-hmm. the company, but the Absolutely. culture of the company. Um, what I would want to know is, do you have a plan in place to reach out to uh, internship possibilities from from the schools, from the tech centers, from Community College of Vermont? Um, as we all know, I think Vermont's an aging state. Um, there's a huge retirement bubble, um, but even more so than the schools and the colleges, going out to the non-traditional internships, working, I know you work very closely with uh, Creative Workforce Solutions. Um, there's also a local uh, jail that pumps out some amazing people that work with Department of Corrections. I've been there, I've seen some of their graphic design, I've seen some of their woodworking skills. Mm-hmm. Um, does JP have an avenue that they're thinking to reaching out for internship possibilities with these partners? Um, you know, I would answer that. It's a good question. I would answer it a few different ways. Yes, we, we have we have programs now. Like we work with Linden. We've got a great uh, program there where we do internships um, within their hospitality programs there um, and with their uh, mountain resort program. But we, in the past, uh, we, we didn't, we weren't even allowed to have an, a human resources department that was big enough to really explore those oh, sorts right. of things. We were busy. Yeah. Uh, in the in human resource world with one and a half people in that department s- doing nothing other than onboarding and offboarding. We didn't even have the time to say, you know what, we have to have somebody dedicated to benefits and, uh, and benefit programming. And we need to have somebody uh, dedicated just on uh, for J1 workers and figuring out ways to get them in and have social programming for them. Um, we didn't have anybody that could explore internship programs. We've, so we've gone from one and a half employees as recently as last year when we were sitting here, to six this year. So we've expanded that department with an eye on doing all sorts of these things. Um, and I would love to, to get some contact info from you and put you together with, with Allison, our director. And if you have some ideas on um, non-traditional intern type mm-hmm. programs, uh, we'd be all over it. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Todd. Anybody else have any questions? I almost think maybe our camera lady is going to have a question here. (laughs) (laughs) You touched on a little bit about having housing for your employees. Now, is that building already built, or is it something you have to wait on now? uh, uh, There are two different buildings. The Ingle Nook, um, which we've used, it's just down the road. In the past, we've used for J-1 workers, um, but it was super underutilized. We had a whole area, uh, wing of the place that was... You know, essentially on uh, Steve, can you explain what a J1 worker for Sorry, the uh, with some of the, the foreign workers um, that come in for two or three months, mostly housekeeping, um, and they come in for three months at a time. Um, and so, so the Ingle Nook had, in, in the past has housed just, uh, just J1 workers. We put a bunch of money into that to, um, to redo the common spaces, redo the kitchens, add more bedrooms, um, spruce the place up quite a bit. So that will be available for folks. And then um, on campus, we've taken uh, the back corner of where we have some of our new uh, retail condos and um, 
built from the from the foundation up a new building that will be just for employees. We just put a roof on it. Um, it will be ready probably around Halloween, and those are going to be um, those are going to be four to a unit. They have, and like I said, they're mm -hmm. uh, beautiful kitchens, fireplaces, decks with views of the mountain, um, all utilities, cable, everything included, and that's going to be like I said around three hundred and fifty bucks a month per employee. So are you expecting that. like single? employees or families single mostly it would be single employees yeah I mean they, uh, I think the way that we have looked at it is every bed has to be occupied by an employee I think that's how we're we're qualifying that so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a solution for somebody um, who's coming up to be a housekeeper who has a husband and kids that are mm -hmm. working someplace else this is going to be strictly for uh, workers who are at the mountain okay, and we're you. taking um, there probably will be a waiting list at some point because we've had a lot of interest in it um, but anybody that ends up being interested in that as an option who's also an employee will simply just get in touch with um, JP human resources and put your name on a list All we right. still have plenty of space for that thank you for clarifying right. yeah thank you Norma I know you were getting up to ask a question here Forgot. No. <laughs> are you good question about job sharing mm -hmm. do you have stuff like that now where two employees can maybe grab 40 hours a week but yet share it so their schedules can complement each other and and you have the coverage that you need is that anything you've entertained yet don't have it in place we absolutely would do it we would absolutely entertain it so you're saying um, somebody can't necessarily work 40 hours a week exactly. they could give us 20 yes um, we will it doesn't even have to be a job sharing scenario somebody could come up and say I only want to work Mm -hmm. 20 hours a week and yeah. we take you yeah so you can come up and say i only want to work eight hours a week we'll take you mm -hmm. so we'll figure the, something the piece out this would be the transportation piece mm -hmm. if they were just coming up to the mountain for four hours mm -hmm. would the van come back yes. for them we will have we will have the van schedules will be such that it will be it will accommodate employee schedules okay. we'll figure we're going to have that figured out they may you know it might not be you know they might not come up for for four hours, work from eight to twelve, and have a van avail available for them at twelve oh three. It mm -hmm. might be twelve forty five, um, but yeah. we'll have options for that. That's great. So the other piece to piggyback with that would be, often the vans are at, you know, some of the larger community parking lots mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yeah. Um, some of the folks that I work with don't have transportation at all, mm -hmm. so um, getting to the van site is costly. Yeah. Um, right now a, a three mile trip in a taxi is eight dollars one way mm -hmm. so it's a sixteen dollar cost every day right. um just to get to the van. yeah yeah and so maybe something to think about yeah i don't know i don't know if we'll have a solution where we can be literally picking up every employee from correct from mm -hmm. their but maybe a stipend to the, the taxi or to rural mm -hmm. community transportation yeah. if there was a grant or stipend yeah that would sweeten the pot a absolutely little bit, that's so. a great idea Okay. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks, you, Norma. Norma. Thank you. Does anybody else have any more questions? Anyone? Great. Well, I, I can't. We're going to get you out of here on time. Excellent. And I think, that, <laughs> I think that's fantastic. Um, I can't tell you how much we appreciate this, though. I mean, I appreciate the audience being out here also with the questions. I think the, the biggest part about this is we wanted people to realize JP is changing. And, yeah. Steve, when you came and said, Whatever the questions are, I'm going to answer them. And I said, well, there could be some tough ones. And Steve said, whatever they are, we need, we need to be upfront with them. So I think this, this is a, a real big step forward mm -hmm. for JP, but I also think it's a step forward for us at Creative Workforce Solutions, um, for our senators and our representatives um, to, to hear what's happening. And also, we want JP to realize that we're there to do whatever we can also to help you guys out. Well, that's that's an important piece. You know, everybody in the audience here is going to play a role um, in getting us employed and, and getting us fully employed and, and changing the employment culture within the region. Um, and I think that JP can play a big role um, in, in uh, being on the other end of that and helping that uh, helping that happen. But you need to hold us accountable. You know, mm -hmm. you need to hold us accountable for the things that I've promised here today and the things that um, we have promised in the media and we need to hold ourselves to a higher standard when it comes to making sure that we attract and retain so that's what I'm in place to do that's great. I think that's it's, great. it's fantastic yeah I mean I you know I echo what Neil said I you know when I was young I was in college I worked up there and uh, you know 
and I enjoyed I enjoyed my time doing that. And it was kind of like Bobby said, there wasn't a lot of people, <laughs> as many people working up there as there is now. But it's but I think and there's a lot of people in the room here who, if you grew up around here, that was you know it was a place to go get a job and to work. And and uh, I think that you know we're all invested in Jay being a great. Um, employer and and also you know just being kind of a jewel here in the Northeast Kingdom for folks um, we go to weddings up there where you know we take our families there to the water park even yeah. though we're not necessarily staying there maybe but you know it's uh, it's important to all of us to yeah. have it be something we're all proud of and so yeah. I mean we're That's in it with that. you yeah. you know and we want to oh, see yeah. yeah you be successful and I mean, we have family that work there. We have, you know, we're all part of this community. So I mean, I, I, I want to get to, awesome. a, I really want to get to a place where we can be in a position to say no to some employees, quite frankly. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and this might not be the audience who we're going to yeah. share that with. Yeah. But the reality is, right. is, we have to say yes to yeah. every single person that comes yeah. right now, and not every person is geared to deliver right. hospitality. Yeah. But we need to, we need to be such a fantastic place to yeah. work at that there is a waiting list of people to get yeah. into positions. And I'm go. not, you know, I'm not. That's a great goal. Yeah, I'm not crazy enough to think that that's going to happen, as I said before, overnight. But we need to. Get, that has to be yeah. where we get to. We have to be yeah. able to choose from the best of the best in these positions. And, right. Yeah. And right. we're going to get there. That's great. I don't want to leave out Representative Marcotts here. Mike, do you have any questions or anything that you would like to put forward? Not to put you on the not spot. Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Neil. <laughs> I, I really don't have a question. Yeah. But I guess... In, in my committee in commerce and economic development, we hear from a lot of big corporations around the state, su successful ones, dealer.coms and, and the such. And you're doing exactly what's made them successful is uh, making your employees your greatest asset. That's it. The, the mountain's beautiful. Everything that's been done there has been great. but to make it a true economic development driver and a, an employer, a great employer, is what you're doing now, yep. is putting these programs into place. So I commend you for that. Um, we're looking for great success. And as Bobby said, anything you need from us uh, in Montpelier, let us know. Any issues that you uh, come up against, um, you know, with the state, um, we're Thank there you. to help you. and. Um, we want to see it succeed. It's, know you, you know, Jay's not part of my district, but it's part of the Northeast Kingdom. Mm -hmm. and yeah. We represent the Northeast Kingdom. So yeah. thank you, Thanks and me. thank you guys, too, for all your work and, and um, really helping Jay to, to be successful, too. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, nothing, uh, you know, to dovetail that, no, nothing up there works with, without great employees. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can add snowmaking and add great restaurants and water parks and ice rinks, but if we don't have people that are delivering such fantastic service mm -hmm. that the guests want to come back, I mean, this isn't just about retaining great employees. It's go. about yeah. creating experiences that retain great guests. Yeah. I mean, and you can't do that without mm -hmm. that part of the formula. Right. And we've, it's not that we've consciously ignored that for a long time, but I think that um, we have, we've had so much else on our radar through a, a, a fast, some would say far too fast growth and development period um, to dealing with this EV5 morass mm -hmm. that that we've we've forgotten about what it is that we need to, to make ourselves successful and it isn't more water parks and it's <laughs> not more this that or the anything it's figuring out ways to get great people and keep mm -hmm. them it's simple yeah. but it, it, I mean it's difficult but it's right, the concept right. of it right. is right it's right in front of us so we've got to deliver on it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, on behalf of Creative, Creative Workforce Solutions, we are definitely looking forward to working with you guys and to doing whatever we can. And I'll, I will speak for a lot of this audience. Um, whatever we you need, we're a phone call away. And let us work together and see what and we, we can do. We appreciate it. We definitely appreciate it. We're definitely going to take advantage of it. So be ready for us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so great. very much. And everybody have a great day. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you.